Today we'll be solving the fourth challenge on Ethernet called Telephone. So let's take a look at what we're supposed to do in this contract. Scroll down. And the goal of this challenge is to claim ownership of the contract below. So let's take a look at the contract. So this is the contract. What I'm going to do is copy this over to Remix. And before we do that, I'll deploy this contract so that we can complete this challenge. Click on Get New Instance and then click Confirm. Okay, so while we wait for the contract to be deployed on the testnet, I've copied over the contract. And again, as a reminder, I've copied over the objective. The objective of this challenge is to claim ownership of this contract. Let's take a look at this contract. What we'll need to do is somehow set the owner to our address. Now I've clicked on the owner state variable and let's take a look at where this owner state variable is being updated. So I see that the owner is set to the deployer of this contract inside the constructor. And if I go down further, there is a function called change owner, which takes the input that is set by the caller, the new owner, and it sets the owner state variable to the new owner from the input. However, there is a condition that we'll need to meet called tx.origin not equal to message.sender. So if we can satisfy this condition, then we'll be able to change the owner. So let's go over what's the difference between TX origin and message.sender. TX origin is the account that initiated the transaction, whereas message.sender is the immediate account that called into this contract. Let me explain. Let's say that Alice calls into contract A and then contract A calls into contract B. Then in this case, Alice will be TX.origin. So inside contract A, TX.origin will be equal to Alice and also inside contract A, message.sender is the account that called into contract A. This will be Alice. Let's take a look at what happens if contract A calls into contract B. So inside here, tx.origin is the account that originated the transaction. The account that originated the transaction is not contract A, it is Alice. Alice initiated the transaction which started the chain of calls from contract A to contract B. tx.origin inside contract B will be equal to Alice. Okay, how about message.sender? Inside contract B, message.sender, message.sender is the account that immediately called into this contract, into contract B. This will be contract A. Contract A called into contract B. So message.sender will be contract A. And that is the difference between tx.origin and message.sender. tx.origin is the account that initiated the transaction, whereas message.sender is the immediate account that called into the contract. They can be the same, but they can also be different. So now the question is, how are we going to satisfy this condition tx.origin not equal to message.sender? Let's say that we're, we're going to be Alice, and we're going to be calling into this telephone contract. So here I'll put telephone. If we call directly into this contract, then tx.origin, that will be us, and message.sender will be equal to us. So this condition will not be satisfied. However, take a look at what happens over here. We have tx.origin is equal to Alice, and message.sender is equal to contract day. These two are not the same. So what we can do is have a hack contract that calls into telephone contract, and then tx.origin, that will be our account, and message.sender will be the hack contract. These two addresses will not be the same, so we'll be able to claim ownership of this contract. Okay, so let's write this in code. So I'll name this contract hack, and then we'll call the function change owner inside the constructor. So all of the code will be executed inside the constructor. Constructor, and then it's gonna take in the address of the telephone contract. I'll name it underscore target. And then what we'll need to do is call the change owner, passing in our address as the new owner. So here I'll type telephone at the address of the target, call the function change owner, and the new owner should be us. When we deploy this contract, message.sender will be our account. And for the new owner, we'll set it to us by saying message.sender. Okay, let's try compiling the contract. Hit Control S. And then we'll try deploying this contract. Click on Deployment tab. Make sure that we're connected to the testnet. And then what we'll need to do next is to get the address of the telephone contract that's deployed on the testnet. 
Back inside the Ethernet web file, I'll get the address of the contract, address of the telephone contract, by hitting F12 on my keyboard. This will pop up the browser console, and inside the browser console, I can see that the address of the deploy contract is here, so I'll copy this. And then back inside Remix, I'll paste the address of the telephone contract, and then deploy the hack contract. And then click confirm. Okay, the contract was deployed, so this means that the owner of the telephone contract should now be us. That's checked by loading the telephone contract. So I'll select the telephone contract and then load it at the address that we copied over from Ethernet. Load it, scroll down, open telephone, and click on the owner state variable. And that is the address of my wallet. So we successfully changed the owner. Let's go back to Ethernet and submit our instance. Back inside Ethernet, the last step to complete this challenge is to click on submit instance. Confirm on my MetaMask and then wait for the transaction to be processed. Okay, the transaction was successfully processed. And once you complete this challenge, you'll see the button change to go to next level.